So as we start finalizing our second articles, one of the things that we should do is continually refine our writing process for the articles. So the main thing that you're doing with each news article is you're picking a topic, you're interviewing a range of people, and then you're writing up what you learn. And mainly what you report is the information you get from your sources. And the best thing to do is frequently to provide that information in their words, meaning you quote them from interviews. But it's not always just quoting from interviews that is necessary in an article. There has to be frequent attribution in numerous ways. So what do I mean by attribution? We're going to look at an article together and focus on the ways that the writer lets the reader know to trust the information that she's provided. So this is an article from last year. It says Raqqa, the ISIS capital, has been captured by the U.S. And let's just, I mean, even just there in the headline, the, the capital is captured, U.S.-backed forces say. So they put it in the headline, meaning they're aware that people might not believe them that the capital has been taken. So they're telling you that, yeah, this is according to American forces. They're the ones who are saying that that happened. The New York Times isn't saying it happened, likely because these two reporters aren't there and can't verify it for themselves. But this is attribution. It's not a direct quote. It's just telling us where you got the information from. Now let's read. American-backed forces said on Tuesday that they had seized the northern Syrian city of Raqqa from the Islamic State, a major blow to the militant group which had long used the city as the de facto capital of its self-declared caliphate. Celebrations erupted in, Ra in Raqqa where residents had lived under the repressive rule of militants. So here they're linking to another story to prove this. Fighters could be seen cheering and firing celebratory gunfire in the streets. So already I'm saying could be seen. Seen by whom? And then we have the attribution. According to residents reached by phone and text message. So again, our reporters aren't there. How do we know that what they're saying happened? They have to consistently tell us in the article. American-backed forces said this. According to residents reached by phone. Then, the United States Central Command stopped short of declaring victory, saying, quote, So notice, even before the first direct quotation from an interview, there's really three types of attribution. The general kind of summation of what the American forces said, a link to another article to, you know, attribute where they're getting this information from, and then the link or the reference to residents reached by phone and text message. So what I'm trying to show you is when you're writing an article, every time you give a piece of information that isn't easily verified by the reader, you have to tell them where you got it from. You don't always have to quote, and you shouldn't always quote because it will read too kind of sloppy if everything is just another quote after quote after quote. So you want to mix up how you attribute information. So, strong journalism is highly dependent upon authors consistent, consistently providing sources for the information they provide. Providing sources goes beyond quoting people. Writers should frequently state where the information they're providing from, where, where the information they are providing has come from. So, look at these three ways of saying basically the same thing. Here's the direct quote from the interview. The car began sliding sideways and then it hit the tree, Bob said. The car hit the tree after sliding sideways, Bob said. These two things are fine. Here we are quoting from an interview. Bob said that this happened. Here you're not giving us the full quotation. You're paraphrasing because the full quotation is longer than you want it to be. So you're summing up without quotations. The car hit the tree after sliding sideways, Bob said. And then finally we have this. The accident resulted in the car hitting the tree according to the driver, Bob Smith. So this isn't even really a paraphrase of the quotation. This is summing up the information that we received from the interview. But look, that it has additional information, according to the driver, Bob Smith. We haven't said that in these two 
parts, then you know the attribution isn't as persuasive because we don't know who Bob is. Here we want to tell them, and that tells us you know that this is probably good information. But stylistically, these three ways are fine. Quote paraphrase or kind of sum up of the facts. But you always want to make sure you're attributing the key information so we know who to trust or how to trust you. Uh, so what do we attribute? Opinions or statements that are made by relevant people, information that the reporter hasn't seen or can physically verify. So sometimes there's something that you weren't there for but you can verify that it happened by video. You don't have to attribute that necessarily. Um, if the video is widespread, but you might. And then specialized information. So a police report, cause of death, so there might be some information that you're getting from like documents or official documents that you want to attribute. Where did you get that information from? Well, from the police report it says this. So always attribute these types of details. You don't have to attribute things that are common knowledge. So it doesn't have to be you know, uh, Jefferson wrote the Declaration in 1776 according to blah, 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 blah. We don't have to attribute that. That's common knowledge. Information that's on the record. So you don't have to necessarily prove something that is um, being provided to you by, say, a press release or an official source. And then there are things that you can say happened uh, where you were there for. So if you're the reporter who's live on the scene and you see celebrations erupting in Raqqa and you see fighters cheering and firing celebratory gunfire in the streets, then this attribution isn't necessary. You can put a period right there because you know it happened. You might want to be more specific. Fighters could be seen cheering and firing celebratory gunfire in the streets of blank. Tell us what streets specifically. But if you were there, you don't have to have according to the reporter who was there. But these things, you should comb through your articles and see, have I attributed everything that you know the reader might not necessarily trust on their own? There's tons of other articles. If you're not quite sure you know, how it, it works, uh, practice with this. You know, Don't just rely on that one New York Times article, but notice the distinct ways each article kind of uh, incorporates attribution. So this is a scientific one and it's really relying on a lot of scientific knowledge so I, I chose this because you'll see how a reporter has to attribute something that's not necessarily their specialty. So if you've got this, if you're understanding it, you don't necessarily have to bother with this article but if you want some more practice, you know, check how are they attributing things? Are they only using interview quotes? They have indirect quotes. Are they researching themselves? Are they attributing official documents? Does everything that they attribute need to be attributed? Are they overdoing it? It's kind of an art that you have to practice. So tomorrow when you come in, I want you to work with your team to read through either your current draft or your plan or whatever you have for Article 2 and see, is there anywhere that you could provide more attrib attribution that you don't already have? Or is there something that you haven't written yet that you know you'll need to find attribution for? And then is there somewhere that it would make more sense to provide an indirect quotation rather than a direct quotation? You don't always have to quote. Sometimes it's stylistically better to do that indirect quoting or even just sum up as in this case. So see where you can kind of just now go through your, your article and stylistically improve the quality of it by working on attribution. And then I'll meet with people and we'll talk about this more uh, in class tomorrow uh, in, in relation to a specific article.